I've celebrated an excessive number of funerals in these past couple of weeks, more than, more than usually come at once. And as a priest, you enter into the suffering of people. Death enters into their family. The death of a husband, of a wife, of a child, of a daughter, a son, a friend, a father, a mother. And there's great sorrow in the hearts of people over death. And so often I think how our Lord died. He died such a terrible death. And God the Father allowed it to happen. As Jesus said in the gospel, my Father would send me 12 legions of angels to come and save me if I asked. But Jesus has immense patience. He came into the world because the human race, including you and me, had sinned and fallen away from God's grace. And his heart is so overflowing with love, like we read about in the prodigal son last Sunday. It's excessive love and forgiveness that we can only imagine. And he comes into the world in order to make that possible for us. And the people who whom he spoke, before whom he worked miracles, before he spoke only of the scriptures, um, they, they, they had feared him because he was seeing deeply into the religious leaders' lives. And he saw their malice in their hearts, but he still loved them and he still kept pursuing them. And all the way to Calvary, I'm always edified by his immense patience, immense patience. The very people that he loved hurting him so cruelly. And he keeps on going no matter what, because his one thought is to reach eternal life with his father. And that's the goal of Lent. We're reminded that our Lenten journey is a, is a journey of life. And in the journey of life, there's suffering, there's difficulties, there's problems of all different kinds. We are called to unite them with the sufferings of Christ. We're called to be patient as day by day the Lord walks with us. Jesus could walk that way of the cross. His mother was walking with him every step of the way. Our blessed mother walks with us every step of the way in our day-to-day -day lives. Simon of Cyrene was forced to help him. Sometimes people are forced to help us. They stripped him of everything. He didn't have a th material thing left at all. Just his body nailed to the cross with a small loincloth around him. And he just kept on patiently going. And if our Lord could, if our Heavenly Father could allow his son to go through that agony, then we realize the depth of our sin and that the only cure was going to be redemption by Jesus, who could offer his life as a redemption for our sins. Adam and Eve sinned, a human being and a God had to redeem us. And so God becomes man and, and he takes on a human nature along with his divine nature so that he can make up for the sins that mankind committed. And that's why he went through all this. But Jesus goes from agony and suffering to happiness and joy. Easter Sunday, he rises from the dead. He overcomes it all. They were just overcome, everybody. The executioners tried to make up lies about somebody stole his body from the tomb because they couldn't let anybody realize that he actually rose from the dead. Can you imagine the overflowing joy in the heart of our Blessed Mother when she saw him alive after she buried him in the tomb? That would have been just incredible. Her joy, incredible joy. And so we've gone from that terrible agony to incredible joy. And the thing is that you and I are called in that same <clears throat> Lenten journey to be reminded that we're on the same path of life. And one day we are going to be pronounced dead. But the moment we close our eyes, the risen Jesus is going to be there. Our blessed mother is going to be there and say, come with me now into my heavenly kingdom. And isn't that the only consolation that we have, the consolation when someone dies who we love? They know that they've just passed on from this life to the next life. 
and there's incredible joy and happiness and peace there. So we can't help but be happy for those we knew and loved who went to heaven. We feel bad ourselves because we miss them. We miss them. And that's okay. The memory of them should remind us of the great gift of God that they were to us. It should remind us that we're headed on the same journey. And one day we too will have that joy. And so tonight, just share these random thoughts with you about the stations. But it always does something to me to see what our Lord did out of love for us and teaching us a lesson that we have to persevere through our sufferings too if we want to get to that point of rising from the dead and eternal resurrected joy in the kingdom of heaven.